Welcome back to Weekly Improvements. In this episode, I will rebuild my hardtail with parts that I have made myself. Let's get started. This is an orange crush frame. I ordered this frame back in 2021 during COVID. At that time, I built the bike with components that I still had from an old bike. Here's an overview of the parts that I will install. Starting with the fork, this is a RockShox pike. I had a new steerer tube pressed in because it was cut too short before. I turned the headset spacers from aluminum because I still had material and it's cheaper that way. I also milled the bash guard myself. What do you think about that? Additionally, I remachined the end caps for my Hope Pro 4 hub to use the torque cap standard for my suspension fork. I will talk more about that later in the video. The bottom bracket has seen better days. To remove the bottom bracket, I first have to unscrew the cranks. First the pinch bolts, then the plastic screw for the bearing preload. I have a special tool for it, but you can also use a kitchen knife for the plastic screw. The screw is not that tight. Then you have to pull the left crank arm off the spindle and then knock out the right part. Now the bottom bracket. The thread on the drive side is a left-hand thread. This means we have to turn to the right to loosen it and to the left to tighten it. But usually, the direction is predetermined. The non-drive side, that is the left side, has a standard thread. After I almost knocked over the camera, we can get an overview of how it looks inside the frame. It's unbelievable how much dirt collects down there. After I have cleaned the bottom bracket housing, we can move on to the chain and derailleur. This chain uses a quick link. To loosen this, you need special pliers. When it comes to the rear derailleur, you first have to loosen the cable tension, then you can unscrew it from the derailleur hanger. After a few rough years on the shift components, it's time to give them a good clean. I will clean them with the help of good old Reinigung's Benzin. It is best to wear a pair of rubber gloves because Reinigung's Benzin is not good for your skin. The cassette has seen better days. Look at how worn everything is. Let's see if the gears work properly later. Now we can start with the fun part, the assembly. First, I screw in the bottom bracket. And with all other metal on metal surfaces, you have to use grease. Now comes my bash guard. I'm very proud of the design, what do you think? Maybe I'll make a separate video about it. The cranks are reassembled in reverse order and tightened to 14 to 18 Newton meters. Can anyone remember the crank shoes from Race Face? They were very popular in 2017 actually useful for not scratching the beautiful aluminum cranks.
Now the rear wheel, first I changed the freewheel from micro spline to the HG standard. With most hubs, you only have to pull off the freewheel body. The cassette cannot be put on incorrectly as the teeth have different spacings. then tightened with a special cassette tool and torqued to 40 newton meters. The brake disc is a Magura disc. These are very cheap and work wonderfully with a SRAM brake system. I screwed the bolts in by hand and then with the drill. After that, I can torque every bolt to six newton meters. A little grease is put on the through axle, which helps to loosen it later. The rear derailleur is only attached with one screw. The chain is fed straight through the pulleys from above. If you've done it wrong, you'll notice it straight away. Then clip the quick link together. I should probably replace it, as they shouldn't normally go together so easily. To make sure the headset bearings are greased, I put a little grease in the bearing shells. The fork with the new steer tube is already cut to Lang. I machined the spacer also by myself. These are 10 millimeters in length each. Maybe I anodize these someday. To round off the cockpit, I installed an anodized CNC turned top cap. I replaced the shift cable and shortened the housing. It's really convenient to have external cable routing. All you need is a zip tie and a side cutter, and boom, the cables are out of the way easy and effective. I also shortened the brake line, as it was too long. After you have shortened the brake line, you need a new olive and insert pin. The SRAM ones are really expensive. Why? 10 of them cost 37 euros 50 cents, or 39 dollars. Luckily, I didn't have to do a full brake bleed just a quick lever bleed and they were ready to go. You can use some brake cleaner to clean of the remainings of the brake fluid. The shift cable is clamped down with a washer and a screw. After you adjusted your shifting, you should check on that bolt again because it's likely that the shift cable has loosened up a bit. The end stops for the gear shift are still set, and with a little adjustment, my bike shifts smoothly again. To protect the cable from damage, I install a crimp sleeve, or as we like to call it in Germany, Quetschhilse. Now for my favorite part, self-turned end caps for my wheels. The RockShox suspension fork supports the torque cap standard. This allows you to increase the contact area between the shock absorber and hub to 31 millimeters in diameter, which helps with the power distribution and stiffness. Just the front wheel brake and the saddle, nothing fancy, but it works. Now I just check over a few bolts and we are done. This concludes this week's episode. Stay tuned for the next episode.